young child is causing all kinds of mischief. Huh? If you try to say, no, don't do that. No, Johnny, you know, do not, you know, throw the dog down the stairs, <laughs> right? What's Johnny going to do? The minute you turn your back, <laughs> yeah. So there's some, been some dogs I would like to throw down the stairs. But anyway, the uh, idea is, as soon as you set up a no, Huh? Then the rascal wants to do it more. Have you seen this? Young children and other types of rascals. As soon as you say, no, don't do that, then that's exactly what they do. You see? This is the rascal mind again. Mind is a rascal. It's a little juvenile delinquent. Huh? So as soon as you say, don't do this. So what do you do? Instead of saying, no, Johnny, don't do that. You say, Johnny, look, here's a new toy truck you can play with. And then Johnny's like, oh, the toy truck, wait. <laughs> right? And he's like throwing the truck down the stairs. <laughs> Better than the dog, right? So anyway, the principle that we're talking about is take the mind, and instead of obsessing on don't do this, don't do that, don't do this this way, don't do that like that, and don't ever do that. Uh -huh. Instead, focus it on something positive to replace one habit with another, one thought with another, one desire with a better desire. You see? Now, so where do all these material desires come from? It's our affection and attraction and attachment for the material world because we identify with the material body. Try to understand. What does that mean? Uh, okay, the real self is the soul. And when the soul says, I'm a soul, and my identity is such and such in relation to Krishna, then we're in our healthy condition. We are one. But as soon as we say, I'm a soul, but I've got this body, huh? this one over here, see? Now we have two things. Now we have two identities. We have our real identity, who we really are, the spirit soul, in relation to Krishna. And then we have this other identity that's involved with a material body, based on a material body. Thinking that I am this body. See? This is called identification. Identification means I think I am something that I'm actually not. Identification. And another thing called projection. Then I begin to project my desires on this body. See? So I have all these desires because I'm a spirit soul and I'm part and parcel of Krishna. And Krishna has all these desires too. So because I'm part and parcel of Krishna, I have the same type of desires. So now, but instead of trying to satisfy my desires in relation to Krishna, I'm trying to project my desires onto this material body, which is something that I'm not. See? So can I ever satisfy my desires that way? No. No. No, because I am satisfied or trying to satisfy my desires using a proxy, using a, a, a projected false identity, something that I am not. See? So even if I get what I want, it doesn't satisfy me. Hmm? It's, it's like, it's like uh, going to some uh, bad restaurant and eating some really bland, you know, tasteless food. Huh? And it fills you up, but it doesn't satisfy you. You walk out of there thinking, boy, I'd, I'd really like an ice cream cone or something, <laughs> you know. But you, you're full, you have no more room. You know? Did you ever have that kind of experience? And the same thing happens when you get uh, your desire satisfied 
even in the material world. Uh, your desire may be satisfied, you may be full, the senses can't accept any more enjoyment, but you're not satisfied. You want something more. That something more is to be satisfied in your real self, to be satisfied in your real identity, to be satisfied as a spirit soul with Krishna. You see? But because the, the identity is split through identification, and because you're trying to satisfy your desires by proxy, uh, by projecting them on the material body, on this false identity, then you, you can't reach satisfaction. So this is the condition of the spirit soul in the material world. The spirit soul in the material world is identified with the body and projecting on the body. Oh, and it gets worse than that. Then we start to identify with other bodies that are related to this body in some way and project on them. You see? But the problem is they're also spirit souls and they have their own desires, <laughs> which are different from ours. Or if they're the same as ours, they're in conflict with ours. Huh? Oh, I, I want you to love me. No, I want you to love me. And then they have competition to see who can get who to love who the most. See? Isn't it? Yeah, this is going on. So in the material world, there's always big problems. And it's there in the very structure of the material world, the very structure of our consciousness, of material consciousness. So what to do? Huh? As, as, so then if we get in, in spiritual life, we try to say, okay, all right, okay, okay. I'm supposed to do this and this and that with my body instead of these other things, right? Now I have all these rules, okay? And all the rules apply to the body. Huh? No meat eating, no illicit sex, no intoxication, no gambling, oh, no speculation. It starts to get a little more, it, it applies to the mind, a little more subtle. But the mind is still part of the body, isn't it? Mind, intelligence, false ego, these are all subtle material attachments. <clears throat> so now we have all these rules that we have to follow with the body. You see? So if we start putting a lot of attention on the body, what I have to do with the body, what I shouldn't do with the body, I have to do this, I have to do that, I have to get up at this time, and I have to go here, and I have to do that, and I have to take bath, and I have to do this, and I have to do that. Body, 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 body. You see? The body is a part of each and every one of those thoughts. I have to do this with my body, I have to do that with my body, I can, can't do this and I can't do that with my body. Body, 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 you see? Just like with the other thing, when, you, when you're thinking against a certain desire, no, I can't do this, I can't do that, you see? The desire itself is always part of that thought. So as soon as you put energy into that thought, no, I'm not going to smoke a cigarette, 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 <laughs> you see? So what you have to do is get beyond that thought. Similarly, when you're in devotional service based on rules and regulations only, how are you going to get beyond the thought of the body? Because you're thinking, oh, I have to put this certain kind of clothes on my body, and I have to put this T-lock mark on my body, and I have to do this with my body and that, and, and not do these other things. So you're always more or less indirectly in body consciousness. And every time you have one of these thoughts, you're feeding that, that identification with the body. So how can you ever get past the body consciousness? See the psychology? Therefore, Nectar of Devotion, again and again, uh, talks about uh, devotional service on the platform of rules and regulations as preliminary, as practice 
as the neophyte stage, as the offensive stage, huh? the close of the previous chapter. Srila Rupa Goswami says that the regulative principles of devotional service are sometimes described by authorities as the path of serving the Lord in opulence. Opulence. Opulence means a lot of material stuff, a lot of rules and regulations. Opulence. So it's possible to get beyond this. It's possible to get beyond the neophyte stage. It's possible to attain a higher level of Krishna consciousness. But what does that look like? Now Rupa Goswami is beginning to describe that level. Because all this, what is it, 14 chapters in the beginning of Nectar of Devotion, he has described the path of devotional service by regulative principles. So this is good for 